Hi, everyone. Glad that you're here joining me. As usual, the Facebook Live scheduling component never does what it's supposed to do. So, as we gather here, I will once again manually go over here and bring everybody on board to the post. You can gather yourselves up and find a live video here. Come here, live video. Come here. I'm still waiting for my live video. How's everybody doing today? Say hi. Check in. We are in the studio today it's a little chilly outside to be outside so um, i'm not going to do that i'm going to watch the video here on my page video oh i'm going to mute myself because we don't want to hear all that and now we're going to share it I start a watch party and there's my watch party and there's that Hi, Bill and Angela. Good to hear from you. Finally, let's see what we got going on here. Yep. There's that. Looks like watch party is going. And it looks like we're ready to start the watch party. And there's the watch party. Okay. We've got the watch party going. We've got the website going. And we've got the live feed going. Okay. I think we're all in good shape to get ourselves situated here for today's devotional. And there's one more thing i got to be able to find because I found something to share with you today that I thought you would find very interesting. But I have to know where it's at. It's up here with, oh, I found it. Okay. And there's that. And there's that. Okay. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and just center ourselves and um, continue to put your prayer requests in. And as I see them pop up, I'll do my best to check in and see how things are, things are going. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer on this beautiful day. Gracious God, we come to you as we near the end of Holy Week on this Holy Thursday, also known as Monday Thursday. And as we gather with Jesus once again, they're getting ready for the Passover meal tonight. All of the events and all of the things that are going to happen have now been set in motion. And now it's a matter of watching them all play out once again. So bless our time here together today, and we learn something new about these last steps of Jesus. And may we remember, may we stop in our day, may we focus in ways we could never focus before because we were always running around and doing everything else. And may we know the price that Jesus paid for us. May we walk with him into these last moments at the table and at the garden and on trial. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask you bless this, our time together with your Holy Spirit. And the people of God said together at home, amen. All right, so let's get to where we need to be here and our little things. And let me look and see if anybody's made any comments yet that I we'll need to see. Not what I want to do. And we're back. All right. Where's my other? Looks like uh, Beth might be joining us and Teresa. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. Joe stepped in. 
Brent. We're pay praying for you um, during this layoff time right now. Looks like Shelly might be joining us here as well. So let me go ahead and get started. Um, I also want to make sure that I invite all of you to join us at 6.30 tonight for our Monday, Thursday service. Um, we have filmed that this week and it's really incredible. And if your church is not doing something, we invite you to join us. We uh, use it as a way to talk about the disciples and learn more about them and these men who followed Jesus and and who they were and the personalities and everything. And then we also, of course, uh, do the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. And we um, will actually have attached to that a video our Jesus' Last Step, Stations of the Cross, which is a mixture of both those things put together. Um, a few things that are added from Thursday to the Stations of the Cross. We filmed them virtually and individually, and so maybe that might be something that might be uh, helpful to you as you journey in this uh, end of Holy Week as well. So we encourage you to uh, watch tonight, 6.30, here on Facebook. You can go to our website, belonggsumc.com or you can go to our YouTube channel and all of those go live at the same time. If you have a smart TV, use YouTube on your TV. Same difference, Roku, same way. As long as you have a YouTube app, you can watch it anywhere, virtually anywhere. So anyways, there's a little just the little um, advertisement for that tonight. And um, hi, Bev. Glad you're here. Joe will pray for your friend Sharon and her dad. It's like Chrissy just popped in here for a second. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with our lesson today. So on Thursday, Holy Week takes a somber turn uh, for everything that everybody that's involved. And sounds my phone here. I thought it was. I guess it wasn't. Although at one point, and we talked about this yesterday, Judas had decided to follow Jesus and experienced all the teachings and all the miracles of Jesus for three years, Jesus chose to betray Jesus for money. Though we really don't know why he chose to betray him. But we're not exactly. The motives that are talked about in the gospel, um, that's what they say, different ways. But we don't know why he did it. Some have thought about that he had done it, he did it because... Um, he was a zealot at heart, so he wanted Jesus to be pushed into a place where he has to use uh, physical um, action to be able to overthrow the Romans. Hi, Chrissy. And um, or it could just be that he was very much he was a thief and stealing from the from the um, common purse. Or it could be that he loved him so much that he just thought that. He was going way too far, like we see in Jesus Christ Superstar. Talks about that kind of a uh, Judas. So there's lots of ways to look at Judas. They're not they're not all the same. So you know we really just don't know why he did it. But it could be the rebellion had filled him with anger, resentment, idolatry of money. I mean, he did. It does happen after the expensive uh, anointment of Jesus. Uh, so they are connected together as far as the gospel writers. And maybe this festered in him, caused him to hate Jesus. But ultimately, for whatever reason, Judas betrays Christ to the chief priest for 30 pieces of silver. And we find that in Matthew 26, 14 through 16. And we find it in Mark 14, 10 to 11. And Luke 22, 3 through 6, if you're following along. And we'll start there and we kind of go forward from that, from those scriptures. So what happens next is from Bethany, Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to the upper room in Jerusalem to make the preparations for the Passover feast for that night. In Matthew 26, 17 through 19, Mark 14, 12 through 26, and Luke 22, 7 through 13. And I'm going to go ahead and show you something. Uh, I'm going to put, you a, put a link in here I want you to look at that's going to help you to, um, let's see right here. This should be right. Yeah. Okay. There is something called gospel parallels and a gospel parallel takes the three synoptic gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke and lines them up with where the events take place in each one. 
And then John's also attached, but John, you'll find out very quickly, does not do anything like the other Gospels. But here's the link to that. I'm going to put it right here, and this should get you there. If you go to this link, it should put you in that Gospel section um, of where you'd want to be. I'm going to go put over here, too, in this watch party. Where are we at? Here we are. And I put it right here. And you should be able to see this in this section. Yeah, that worked. So you should be able to see that on one of the watch parties. Um, if you don't, let me know, and then I'll, I'll post it later on. But anyways, Synoptic Gospel Comparisons, Parallels, have all of these different things. So when you're looking at this, it can really help to be able to figure out where each one of these things is taking place. So hopefully that's helpful as we go along here, rest of our lesson. All right. So on the first day of the Festival of Unleavened Bread, we hear these words from Matthew 26, 17 through 19. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. So they went ahead, prepared the Passover, obviously uh, something had been set up beforehand. And then at that evening after sunset, in the upper room, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples as they prepared to share in the Passover. By performing the act of humble service, Jesus demonstrated by example how believers should love one another. And to me, today, many of us in church services we usually have, we have foot washing ceremonies a part of the Monday Thursday service. So that goes to where Monday Thursday comes from. It's not just simply that somebody's watched the Godfather too many times, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's not that. Monday, Thursday is Latin. Monday, the word Latin means commandment. So it's really commandment Thursday. And the whole thing is because Jesus gives the new commandment to love one another as I have loved you when he's washing feet. And that becomes basically the hallmark of who Jesus is. And so Monday, Thursday has always been a service basically of foot washing, celebrating the Last Supper, perhaps mentioning the Garden of Gethsemane, and gathering those things together um, in that way. Then they observed the last Passover that Jesus will partake with them after the washing of feet. See, they, see the washing of feet is all because um, they didn't do their jobs. See, what happened is you're supposed to hire somebody to wash feet when you come out the dirty road because obviously it's dusty and dirty and there's animals, stuff all over it. And so, and when you when you eat in the Jewish tradition, you recline on pillows or some other way usually. So that means that usually your feet are in the face of the person who's next to you. So imagine if you haven't washed your feet after being on a hot, dusty road, what that would probably smell like. And Jesus comes in, and everybody's ignoring the fact is they all stink. And no one's taking ownership for it. And so he finally just takes off, you know, grabs a towel, takes off his outer garment. And here you have the Son of God kneeling down to wash the dirty, stinking feet of the disciples who didn't bother to do their own job. So the pretty powerful moment when you look at the whole understanding and then all of a sudden they wake up and like peter realizes like don't just wash my my feet wash all of me and it's like no no, no you don't even get it so they observed this last passover in mark 26 mark 14 luke 22 and john 13 it's in all four of them and so it says then jesus shared the feast of passover with his disciples saying I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you, now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Hi, Renee. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. Looking for any other comments. Carol. Lynn. Um, 
So he tells him it's going to be the last Passover. And he's been very eager to be able to celebrate it with them. And that the kingdom of God will be fulfilled before they see him again. So as a lamb of God, Jesus was about to fulfill the meaning of Passover by giving his body to be broken and his blood to be shed in sacrifice, freeing us from sin and death. And during this Last Supper, then, Jesus established the Lord's Supper, which, of course, the words that we use um, during the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, the Great Thanksgiving, however you want to call it, are taken from these passages. And we call communion. And he instructs his followers to continually remember his sacrifice by sharing the elements of bread and wine. And the most well-known version of that, you can find it in Luke 22, 19 through 20, which we quote um, sometimes. But Matthew 26, 26 through 29 really has the, the fullest version of it. It says this, while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it, gave the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. They took a cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, the meal would probably have included lamb and bitter herbs, olives, unleavened bread or matzah, stew, wine, dates, all those different kind of things. Symbolic things sometimes that we do with the uh, Seder meal. If you ever had a Seder meal or a Passover meal, um, then you know about the bitter herbs and you know about the salt water and the egg and all the pieces that go along with uh, that meal. So very similar type things. And little did they realize the irony that they're enjoying the Passover celebration with the very Lamb of God who's about to be sacrificed on the cross for them so that God will pass over them like the Passover did when it saved the Israelites with the blood of the lamb being on their doorposts in Egypt for the final um, opportunity for them to be able to escape and be freed. And so that blood of that lamb isn't just on the doorways of the Israelites in that day. That blood of the lamb then becomes the blood of the lamb for all of us. So then they, it heads to the Garden of Gethsemane. So after the service is completed, Jesus and the disciples left the upper room, and they sang a hymn. Then they walked to the Mount of Olives. This is in Matthew 26, 30, Mark 14, 26. And at roughly 9 p.m., while walking to the Garden of Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives, Jesus tells the disciples he is the true vine. So in John 15, they're relating that this is where that, you know, I am the true vine happens. And he offers his final words of encouragement, John 16, and again states the disciples will leave him. All this happens in John. There isn't the same parallel, which you'll notice in the other Gospels. Um, so Jesus' disciples arrive at the Garden of Gethsemane, where Peter, James, and John are taken to stand watch while Christ prays for three hours. Now, can you imagine praying for three hours? That's a long time to pray. And the disciples, though asked to stay awake while he prays, now remember, this has been a long day. He said, he said some things at dinner that I don't understand. He says, this is it. He says, this is our last meal together. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. And it's an emotional time. So you can imagine start trying to stay awake during this time um, as well. Oh, hi, Shirley. Shirley's watching. And um, so... Then they quickly fall asleep. They just, they just, they can't stay awake. Jesus prayed in agony to God the Father. In Luke's gospel, it says that his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. That's in Luke twenty two forty four. That's an actual medical condition that can happen under extreme do undue stress. People can actually get so stressed out, they can sweat drops of blood, which is a really interesting thing. You can look it up and be able to see more about it. And although he initially prays the cup of suffering and death awaiting him to be taken away, a cup is not literally, not literally the same kind of cup we drink out of. A cup in the Old Testament uh, is very often a symbol of God's wrath or God's judgment. So in this case, this cup is something, you know, taking it on, 
God's judgment. But Jesus ultimately accepts whatever the Father uh, God wills in that moment. And you can find all this in Matthew 26, 36 through 44, Mark 14, 13 through 20, Luke 22, 39 through 46, and John 17. So this whole thing is in all four Gospels. And whenever something is in all four Gospels, that's really important to look at because it really means something that they've all agreed on something. And the other thing is, when you only find something in one gospel, that also means something. So looking at your gospel parallels, you'll notice several things in there, which I'll mention in a minute, which are in one place, but not another. So, so then, this is the actual, from Matthew, the text of that whole garden scene. Then Jesus went with them to pl a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. Now, it's not very often we ever hear Jesus say those kind of words. Um, he's very upset. And going a little farther, he fell on his face. He just fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Can you imagine that? When he goes back out after praying, he's, he's going through these really hard times, and he goes out, and people who are closest to him are all asleep. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? See, one hour out of the three. Watch and pray that you may not enter in temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weakening. Weaken is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. So the second hour. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. So he's starting to move into this place of, of agreement. And again, he came and found them sleeping. Now, if you were sleeping the first time, we do everything possibly could do to make sure you're awake the second time, but they're asleep. And their eyes were heavy, it says. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time. So now it's the third hour, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep, take your rest later on, see the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hand of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So what's happened is at that moment, late that evening in Gethsemane around midnight, Jesus arrives at the garden, accompanied by armed officers and other men provided by religious leaders. Judas Iscariot, as a signal of which person to arrest, gives Jesus a kiss and is arrested by the Sanhedrin. And he was taken to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the whole council had gathered to begin making their case against him. And that's in Mark 26, 45 through 49, Mark 14, 41 through 45, Luke 22, 47 and 48, and John 18, 1 through 8. And even though technically this doesn't occur on Thursday, since most of us aren't going to be up at 2 a.m. in the morning, I wanted to go ahead and add this piece before we get to uh, Good Friday tomorrow. So approximately 2 a.m., the high priest questions Jesus about his disciples and teachings, but does not receive an answer. Frustrated, he adjusts, he adjures him by the living God to state whether or not he is the true son of God. That's in Matthew 26, 62 and 63. And the answer he gets, receives, is so anger, he's so angered by it, he tears his clothes, he rends his clothes, I mean, actually tears it, literally tears them, a sign of distress, and cries out that Christ has committed blasphemy. Now, during this time, there, there were people in the Sanhedrin who were still trying to, to defend him up until this happens. And so the high priest then immediately asked the council for a verdict to which they unanimously shout the death penalty should be carried out. And this is also because the Sanhedrin is meeting at 2 a.m., which means not everybody's there. It's a hastily called meeting, and so not all of the Sanhedrin are there. And it's really illegal what they're doing. 
and some of them will even say so, even though it's not recorded here. Other places, you you understand that they did say um, that it was illegal to do this. So, would you find that in Matthew twenty six fifty nine through sixty eight, Mark fourteen fifty five through sixty five, and Luke twenty two sixty three to sixty five? Does not happen the same way in John. And so, so meanwhile, in the early mornings, then as this trial is getting underway. That's when Peter denied knowing his master three times before the rooster crowed. See, so between 2 a.m. and the morning watch is when Peter is, uh, those events are happening right around there. So you can see all these Thursday events recorded in Matthew 26, 17 through 75, Matthew 14, 12 through 72, Luke 22, 7 through 62, and John 13, 1 through 38. Um, all of these particular events are happening there. And if you look at your um, gospel parallel, what you're going to see is under the Passion Narrative number 16, you're going to see a whole bunch of things that are happening um, in John that you don't see in other places, a lot of teaching happening. But you're also going to see like the death of Judas, for instance. The death of Judas is only in Matthew. We don't have that anywhere else in the same way. You'll see the trial before Pilate and all that goes later on. Peter's and Niles in all four. You'll see um, Jesus before the Sanhedrin in all four. You'll see him arrested. You see him in Gethsemane. You know, so you have all those pieces that are there and you go forth and go, go further. Like you'll only see in Luke that Jesus is before Herod and Pilate declares Jesus innocence. We'll talk about tomorrow about that. But this is a great way to be able to see that. If you hover over that particular scripture, it actually puts it up on the screen, even though it's in a King James translation, it looks like, um, or something like that. Um, it at least helps to be able to see it. There are other gospel ones out there. I just grabbed the first one that popped up and um, thought it might be helpful for you uh, today. So is there anybody else asking any questions anywhere before I move away from all of this. I'm looking to see right now if there's anything else. Oh, Shelly says she made a live one and watching later in the day all week. Yeah, you can watch these afterwards. Um, I think I put Wednesday up. If I didn't, it'll go up to, it may go up today, actually. And then uh, Nancy Bartlett was watching. And, oh, my in-laws, Jim, and Martha Davenport are watching, so glad to have you all here. And one more check on my other feed and see if there's anything else that's going on. Nope. So I'm going to close with a word of prayer, and I hope you will join us tonight at 6.30. Um, I made an intro video that you'll be able to watch, and I, had, I was wearing this shirt, not a fan. I was filming today. It's really weird filming pieces for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and I, and I filmed an intro for Easter today. Um, even though we'll be live for that. Um, I was wearing the shirt, not a fan. And that comes from uh, Kyle uh, Eidelman's um, study we've done during Lent before. And basically, I said today that I'm not a fan of two things. I'm not a fan, first of all, we can't gather together for services like Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and of course, Easter. Um, definitely not a fan of that. These are my um, the most powerful services of the year, I believe, and I really... Um, enjoy being together to celebrate them. Second thing I'm not a fan of is Jesus. I hope you're not either. I hope you're a follower. And this is that real time when we can really delve in deeper uh, on Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and even Saturday when there's stillness before we get to Easter. If we just jump from Palm Sunday uh, to Easter, then, you know, we've missed everything in the middle of the week. And that's really important. Everything happens in the middle of the week is extremely important to understand understand and truly celebrate what Easter looks like. And uh, so I hope you will take some time, even though it's going to be virtually, to be able to do that. Read these scriptures, study them, look at all of them, watch movies. If you like a good Jesus movie that you like, your favorite one, make sure you watch it and watch the part specially focused on um, this last week. Most of the Gospels are all dedicated to this because it was really important to understand Holy Week before you went to celebrate at the empty tomb on Easter. So I want to close with this word of prayer as we gather in this time. And so let's pray together. 
Lord God, you sent your Son into the world, and before his hour had come, he washed his disciples' feet. You had given all things into his hands. He had come from you and was going to you. And what did he do? He knelt down on the floor and washed his friends' feet. He was their teacher and their Lord, yet he washed their feet. Lord God, help us learn from his example. Help us to do as he has done for you. The world will know we are his disciples if we love one another. Strengthen our hands and our wills for love and for service. Keep before our eyes the image of your Son, who being God became a servant for our sake. All glory be to him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So I encourage you to join me tomorrow at noon, which will actually be pretty powerful because noon is when things are happening. And I hope that you'll be able to join us. Have a good rest of the afternoon. Enjoy this beautiful sunshine. I guess it's dogwood winter because of the temperature, because the dogwoods are blooming. Go out, look at a dogwood. They're an amazing plant and tree themselves. Maybe we'll discuss that tomorrow too. Have a blessed day.